What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In this video, I'm going to be putting together an awesome RTX 3080 and 12th gen Core i9 gaming PC build. I'll be running you through all of the components I selected and why, doing my absolute best to make this build look as good as possible before testing it out in some of the latest AAA titles, including the brand new Call of Duty Vanguard to see just how well the PC stacks up, and of course, my favourite title, for the Horizon 5. Let's dive into it though after a quick ad from today's video sponsor. Corsair's M65 RGB Ultra Wireless builds upon the legendary M65 design with the latest Corsair Slipstream Wireless tech and much more. With a 26,000 DPI Corsair Marksman sensor that can be adjusted in DPI steps as small as one, this mouse means business. Adjustable weight allows you to find your perfect center of gravity, while Omron optical switches deliver hyper-fast and precise responses. Everything you love about the M65 in 2021, now wireless. Check it out at the links in the description below. As you can see from some of our hardware, we've got a bit of an MSI theme going on. The first of those MSI components is the motherboard. Now this right here is their MEG Z690 Unify. Now this is a really nice board that supports 12th gen CPUs and looks absolutely fan fantastic with built-in wi-fi support a built-in rear io shield and of course a really really nice io that includes usb-c a pair of two and a half gigabit ethernet ports and more it really is stacked out with plenty of features not only that you get the latest algae 1700 socket for those 12th gen chips ddr5 support and all in all a really nice neutral all black design with no rgb in sight this board would actually work really well for like a stealthy theme, so if you'd like to see us do something along those lines, make sure to get subscribed. Into the motherboard, I'll be installing this, our CPU. Now this is the brand new i9-12900K, and it's basically the most powerful consumer chip on the market right now. It only really gets beaten out by AMD Threadripper, which then falls behind in single-threaded performance, making this basically the fastest gaming CPU on the market. The best part about it as well is that Intel haven't ripped anybody off with pricing on these. In fact, it actually comes in cheaper than the Ryzen 9 5900 and 5950X. I really commend Intel's approach with 12th gen. They've taken the fight to AMD well and truly, and you can learn more about my thoughts on the whole fiasco in our dedicated video on the channel right now. I'm excited to see AMD respond, but until then, Intel is most definitely the best option for a high-end build like this one. I am literally throwing things everywhere. Into the motherboard, I'll also be installing our RAM or our memory. Now this board is a DDR5 board, meaning you need the latest, fastest DDR5 memory. DDR5 is admittedly still in its infancy right now, allowing you to get fairly similar performance results with DDR4. With that being said, we're still recommending DDR5 for any of our i7 or i9 builds with these 12th gen processors. For this system, I've had to pick up a low profile kit of Corsair's Vengeance. I would have used their Dominator Platinum kit, which I really, really like. But the problem with that is it's too tall for the cooler I'll be using today, which also ties into the stealthy all black idea I talked about a little bit earlier. As far as storage in this build goes, I've picked up a one terabyte W Black SN850. MSI and Seagate are also great options in the Gen 4 NVMe market and may give you slightly better write speeds than this drive. But read speeds are amazing at around seven gigabytes per second. And you can find our full SSD performance tests over on the website. Now this drive here is actually the heatsink version, meaning we'll need to remove one of our covers here to actually expose the drive and show it in all of its glory. You could save yourself a bit of cash and pick up the non-heatsink version and just use the ones that come included on the board. But for us today, I think I want to show our WD Black Off in all of its glory. So take off the heatsink, whack the drive in, and that's basically it. And with that, the motherboard is looking pretty damn good, but don't get too ahead of yourselves, we're not quite done here just yet, as we're also going to install the CPU cooler onto the motherboard before moving it into our case doing any of the next stages of the build. Now I have gone and picked up the Cools AK620. If I'm being honest with you, we just don't have that many coolers in the office right now that support LGA1700. But this one does. We've got the adapter, we've got the extra brackets for it, and it performs so well. Some people will be confused as to why I'm pairing up an i9 with an air cooler. The new Intel chips have a reputation, right, for running blisteringly hot. Well, sort of. If you put them in a 100% stress test for the next hour, they will get up to 90 degrees on most coolers quite easily. But in real world gaming scenarios, 
videos, the i9 is just not hitting 100% utilization because the GPU or the storage or another component in your build, heck, even the RAM are the bottleneck. Also in games, your CPU typically won't be pinned at 100% unless you've got a stupidly powerful graphics card and a weak processor. Meaning oftentimes the reaction from a lot of media at the moment in my view is slightly overblown. This deep cool cooler is awesome though and screws onto our CPU nice and easily. Just be careful, you will need some low profile memory, otherwise your extra fan on the right hand side of the cooler just isn't going to fit. We made this mistake in a recent build, we managed to get around it with some really good airflow so no huge panic, but obviously you want the extra fan for the extra cooling capacity. Not too difficult to install either, so I'm giving the deep cool AK620 5 out of 5. Nice work deep cool. Once the motherboard then is looking a little bit more complete, we can move it over into the case and try not to crush it on the table. Now this right here is Corsair's 5000D Airflow. This is a really, really great chassis with plenty of features and the only thing it really lacks is RGB. But don't worry, we're gonna fix that by decking this thing out with plenty of RGB fans a little bit later in this video. With lots and lots of ventilation, Airflow is basically this thing's middle name. Temperatures should be nice and low and the air cooler is going to have plenty of fresh clean air to choose from when it comes to keeping the CPU nice and chilly. I've already taken off the glass side panel, but I'm next gonna take off the rear panel as well. It just unclips nice and easily to make things a bit more simple when it comes to actually installing the motherboard. You can see that it just slides in nice and easily. It's gonna sit over those standoffs just for now. They will hold it into place before we actually go ahead and screw it in. Don't leave it here for too long as it will fall if left on its own accord with our nine standoff holes. We've got three at the top, three along the middle and three across the bottom as you guys are used to uh, when it comes to full size ATX motherboards. Nice, so with that done, the build is starting to shape up. There is one thing I'm slightly worried about though, and that's the amount of empty dead space in the case. But I think I might just have a solution for that a little bit later. First though, we do need to pop in our power supply. Now MSI have entered the market of CPU coolers, SSDs, cases, motherboards, GPUs, and now power supplies. This is their A850GF. It's an 80 plus gold certified fully modular unit with all the bells and whistles we could possibly want. The cables included are also this nice neutral black color. They're not sleeved or anything overly fancy like that, but they'll do the job definitely for our system today. And the power supply actually doesn't break the bank, all things considered. The fully modular interface as well means you only plug in the cables you need, helping to keep your cable management nice and efficient. The last thing anyone wants is spaghetti junction of cables down by our power supply shield. So really great work from MSI to structure things in this way. One thing this case also does quite well is the ability to have the fan on the power supply either way. You can either have it facing up, pulling air in from the case itself, or for us, I think we're gonna have it facing down, pulling air in from underneath the chassis. It just gives you plenty of flexibility should you have a thick carpet or rug and not have that clearance under the case. With that done, there's just one or two more things left to go. We need to pop some extra RGB fans in later, but before that, it's time for the GPU. This is none other than the MSI Supreme RTX 30. 80. Now I've got a bit of an idea when it comes to installing this graphics card inside our 5000 series case. I would quite like to mount it vertically but I don't know if it's going to be too tall with the air cooler. So I guess there's only one real way to find out. Hover the GPU in and that to me looks like it's going to fit. Now full disclaimer time with big flashing red arrows and nuclear sirens. This probably isn't going to be the very best solution when it comes to airflow and temperatures. And if you'd like to perform better in that regard, pop it in the standard horizontal orientation. But for me today, I'm feeling like I want to take a risk. I'm going to pop the GPU vertically mounted and that will just give us that much better aesthetic look of our system and help the whole thing to feel a bit less empty. Something you could avoid by going for a smaller case, but I love the IQ 5000 series. Let's go ahead and get the GPU installed using one of these. Corsair's special uniquely designed premium PCIe riser. You can get these in PCIe 3 or 4.0 varieties, but make sure to set the settings in your BIOS to PCIe 3.0 if you've got a 3.0 version. Otherwise, your GPU won't output a signal and it won't work. So there is an extra step involved here, but we'll try and get a shot of us doing that so you guys can see how it's done. First things first, I'm actually gonna couple the riser and the GPU together while it's out of the case. That might make life a little bit easier. Make sure it fully latches as well with our little latch up here. And then the other end is gonna run into the motherboard. To do that, we're just gonna pop our riser into the board itself. It will need a little bit of persuasion most likely to actually properly install. So there we go go that's clipped in nice and firmly make sure your riser is still on your GPU on the other end as well tuck those cables in nice 
nicely, pull up the back door, and your GPU is basically in. Fasten it down with some screws to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, and then wire it up with some GPU power. But otherwise, with fans the only thing left to go, which we'll do in just a second, we're actually ready to boot our system up and check out the performance numbers in a wide range of titles. Before any of that though, as is customary here on the channel, I want to see just how good this thing looks with those RGB fans with our vertical GPU mount when the PC is all powered up and ready to go. And that can only mean one thing, roll the montage. I don't care if you're talking about us, no. Lovely stuff. Now that we've seen just how good this system looks and it's all powered up, you guys know what's coming next. It's time for the performance section of today's video. On your screen now is a summary, a snapshot view of all the different games we tested out at varying resolutions and settings. Across the board, we tried to test out at 1440p and 4K, as we figured for a high-end system like this one, that's where we get the best results. You can also find average GPU and CPU temperatures here, showing that the new Intel chips perhaps don't run quite as hot as what some people might suspect. Let's take a closer look though at some of these titles starting off with GTA 5. Here at 4K high settings we got 176 frames per second on average, where the title looked absolutely fantastic. We tested it out in the game's inbuilt benchmarking mode as usual. Battlefield 2042 is next up, and here at 4K with DLSS enabled and set to performance mode, we got 101 frames per second. A really fantastic result in the new Battlefield. It's not just Battlefield that's new today though, Call of Duty Vanguard is also a brand new title and it's on our benchmark list. First we tested out at 4K high settings and achieved 95 frames per second on average, with strong 90 and 99th percentile results which showed consistent frame rates all around, but we actually managed to get this frame rate even higher in our second test, 4K high settings but with DLSS enabled. This jumped us up by 35 frames per second to 130 FPS, really impressive stuff. As if we hadn't had enough new games for today, Forza Horizon 5 is next on the list. Here we achieved 91 frames per second on average, with 83 and 78 for the 90 and 99th percentiles. All of our frame rates measured as usual with both NVIDIA Frame View and MSI Afterburners Revertuner. Moving on to Apex Legends, here we tested once again at 4K high settings. And this might concern some of you, but don't worry, the frame rate was still top tier. 136 FPS on average. Moving on to Valorant, the next game on the list, we tested this at 4K high settings and got some absolutely ridiculous frame rates, 337 frames per second on average to be precise. Finally, the last title on the list today is Fortnite, and here we tested out at 1080p competitive settings. Basically, everything tuned down to low, the render distance set to high, and off you go. Here we got 365 frames per second on average, a really, really incredible result for a system like this. With that though, that pretty much wraps it up for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks once again for tuning in, and as always, we'll see you in the next one.